Hello and welcome to another edition of Attract Well Office Hours. I'm Coach Ashley, joined today by founder of Attract Well, Greg Kilwine. Hey, Greg. Hey, everyone. We're really glad you're here today. We also have Julie joining us from our team. Good to see you here, Julie. Hello. Hey, so as you guys are coming in, let us know where you're coming in from and what you're working on in your business this week. Maybe tell us a little bit about who you are and who you help. We're always excited to learn more about the folks who show up here. Uh, we are thrilled to have you here as always. We're live every Thursday at 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern time, unless uh, last week or whenever it was, we happened to be at a conference. We are so happy to be back <laughs> uh, and to have dodged that big airplane snafu. That was the, or the, the Delta thing. That was crazy. Um, anyway, glad uh, to be here with you guys this week. Uh, we're going to get into talking about how you can use events to grow your business and how you can use a track world to save tons of time doing so. Uh, I've got some slides prepared for you, so I'm going to go ahead and pop out a video along with Julie and Greg. We will come back and join you here in just a little bit. Uh, again, don't be shy. Head into the chat. We are always excited to hear from you. Uh, let me grab my share here and we can get this show on the road. Excited to, to talk through this with you guys this week. So here we go. All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about how to use live events to grow your business. And uh, what that's going to look like is first a discussion on what it means to use events as lead magnets. We'll also talk about systems and tools that you can leverage so that hosting more events becomes something that's possible for you without you know, maybe digging into the time that you would be spending in other areas of your business. We'll talk about how you can manage and automate your events with Attract Well. And then as always, we'll get into some live help and Q&A. So if you have though any questions, whether they have to do with today's subject or not, please do go ahead and add those questions to the Q&A. This is a live call that is dedicated to working with you here together. It's not just about learning, it's about growing and implementing. So we are here. If you have questions, go ahead and add those now. And if you're watching this as a replay and would like to join us on a future live call, head over to attractwell.com slash office hours to hop on the list and be the first to know about upcoming topics. And of course, to be able to join us live here on Zoom. We are again live every Thursday at 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time outside of holidays and rare other occasions. If you'd like to work together live as one person is signed up to do today, you can go to attractwell.com slash work review. This is an opportunity to look at your work together. This is a great, uh, great opportunity to work together on a call like this one. We can share screens. We can get into your account if you're stuck on something uh, or if you just want to chat strategy. We've got lots of options here and you can reserve a spot by going to this link and if you would just like to hand off the work that you want done to an expert in Attract12 who could get it done beautifully and quickly for you, you can go to attractwell.com slash concierge to learn more about our team, some of the projects that they have done, and you can request a chat with them so that you can come up with a quote. All right, so let's talk about live events, using live events to grow your business. So when we're looking at events, we basically have more or less two different ways to look at this, or at least that's how I'm approaching this here today. We've got events that we charge for, meaning we've got events for profit. Uh, and then we've got events that we're using to direct towards our profit opportunities, right? Uh, so what we're really focused on here today is how we can use events as a way to grow our business, whether that be to grow our list or even more ideally to grow our list and also sell the things that we are offering. So the scope here, I'll go over on this slide and then we're gonna get into some discussion here uh, about how we would be able to set these things up in AttractWell. We'll demo some of the features in AttractWell to get this done and just generally chat strategy. So if you are someone who uh, has maybe specific questions or there's an approach that you're looking to take with your events that might differ slightly from what we're discussing, I wanna invite you right now uh, to make sure that you put those into the Q&A so that we can chat through those things together here on the call. That is a benefit of being here live is that if you feel like you uh, are maybe an edge case in, in in some ways or have some kind of unique circumstance, uh, we can chat through it because this is all possible with AttractWell. So the events that you host, these can be virtual, meaning they can be on Zoom or they can be in person. You can make these free for people to attend 
or you can have some kind of a nominal cost. Uh, this is going to be uh, really dependent, again, on your business model and uh, sort of what your goal for the event might be, what your expenses might be uh, in, in covering facilities and things like that. So ultimately, what we're going to do here uh, in our events is to deliver value and then sell the next step. You don't wanna go through all the trouble of planning and creating an event and hosting an event uh, to not have some way to ultimately monetize it. You don't wanna leave a question mark at the end of it. You don't wanna go stand up in front of a room and talk just because you can. You want to make sure that whatever it is that you're doing is strategic, right? So what we're doing in this instance, events as lead magnets, is we are delivering value that's promised and then we are pivoting or positioning the thing that uh, that we're ultimately selling as the thing that comes next for the people who are ready or qualified for it. And listen, having live events, whether it's virtual or in person, it's one of the most effective ways to close, especially um, if you are someone who, you know, maybe is newer to the idea of selling in the digital world, creating sales pages, et cetera. I'm a big fan of utilizing technology to support things that are already working for you, right? Uh, not using technology to, to reinvent some kind of wheel that doesn't exist in your world. And so what this means is, is you've got an opportunity to leverage systems and to, um, and, and to really position you as an authority so that when people step into that space, whether that be on Zoom or in person, they're receptive, they're prepared to listen. And of course you, because you are there, you as you, not you as a video or you as stuff you wrote on a sales page, because you are there, you are able to close those gaps a lot more effectively to help people make a decision to make a purpose, uh, to make a purchase, right? So. Um, whether you're one-on-one -on -one or whether you have some kind of a group, like a, a an event, like what we're discussing today, um, those are the best ways to close, um, especially if you are not, you know, a um, an experienced copywriter. All right, so let's talk about how we develop our event strategy. If you want to host events, uh, virtual or in person, to grow your business then uh, we need a strategy behind how to do it. Let's talk about that. And, uh, and, and this is going to come in the form of questions. You have to ask yourself these questions and have the answers to these, ideally in order, for you to be able to set this up successfully. First, you need to know what you're selling. Like I mentioned before, we aren't just walking into a room to speak because we can. We need to know what the pitch is that we're placing, right? What is it that we are selling? I want to host events so that I can grow my list, so that I can sell what? What are we selling? If the event is uh, maybe titled or themed, uh, maybe there's a particular promise that you're making, um, whatever that looks like, what is the thing that you're selling that ties to it, right? The, the, the event is ultimately uh, setting the stage for you to sell the thing that you want. So we first have to begin with the end in mind. What is it that we're selling? And then in terms of logistics, tools, where will you send them to make this purchase? When someone says, yes, this is for me, are you collecting their information there in person? So are you gonna be using forms? Are you going to pull up a page on your website where you simply enter payment information and you send the details by email? Or are you sending them to a sales page? Are you sending them to a vault checkout page? You need to know logistically, where is the place that you are directing them to when they say yes? Okay. These are the two most important things that we have to have figured out because the purpose of all of this is to send them to this place to make this purchase. And then we have to decide what the lead in offer is. And, and typically that lead in offer is going to be the promise of value at this event. Right. So if I'm going to offer an event that says, you know, join me on uh, on Tuesday at 7 p.m. and I'm going to show you how to ABC. Right. That's the lead in offer because we know ABC leads to D and D is the thing that I'm selling. Does that make sense? So we need to know what we're selling. That's the end. And then we need to know what precedes it. 
What is the lead in offer? What is the carrot that we're dangling? What is the reason why people would spend an hour or more out of their day, set this time aside, come to you or click a link and join you for this length of time and pay attention? What's in it for them? And how does this connect to the thing that you're selling? And then of course, finally, is this something that you plan to host virtually on Zoom? Or is this something that you will do in person? Obviously, either of those two things are going to have a couple of specific considerations, such as are you, you know, booking a room versus are you creating a Zoom meeting link, right? Okay, now events as, oh, let me go, sorry, let me get back here. <laughs> okay, so if you want to host events regularly, which uh, depending on the type of business that you have, this can be an incredible way for you to build not just an audience, but an audience of super fans, people who really get to know you, who like what you're about and trust you enough to purchase themselves and probably even to refer their friends. If you are showing up and providing value on a consistent basis that people can engage with, and I don't mean just, you know, a YouTube channel or a blog, um, taking this step beyond to have events uh, is a really fantastic way to build depth and connection with your audience. Uh, and it's something I highly recommend doing consistently. But the issue is, is that there's a lot of creative energy that we would typically put into setting this kind of thing up, right? So what I wanna encourage you to do is use Write with AI and Attract Well to build up your ideas, maybe plan in advance, have one event per month uh, and plan those out six months at a time, right? Once you've done this, really start looking at this as something that you can batch. So batch the, you know, coming up with the topics for what the lead-in offer will be to sell this thing that you're selling for the next six months. And then you can go in using a tract well and streamline how you're offering that so that it just, it, it, when it's time to, uh, to promote the next one, you are simply promoting the next one and not having to repeat the cycle, right? So let's talk about how we would set this up in a tract well. I'm gonna talk you through this. I'm gonna show you a, a couple of, uh, of sort of visual models of diagrams of how you could set something like this up. And then we can actually go and visit these features in a tract well and discuss what they look like uh, in the system. And of course we could certainly talk through any of you guys' ideas as well. So the first thing that you want to do when you've decided when this event is going to be and you have all of its details is you're going to create a campaign in Attract Well. This is going to be a date-based campaign and it's going to, on day zero, confirm their registration, right? So you've signed up for this event. It's at this location, this date, this time, this topic. Here's what you do next. Hit reply, forward this to a friend, whatever, right? That's your day zero message. And then based on your, um, your campaign and how you've created it, when it begins sending, because it is a date-based campaign, you're going to choose the appropriate date so that either on the day before or the day of or both, you're reminding them, right? So uh, in particular, you're going to want to do a day before and day of if this is a virtual event. Those are things that are very easy for people to just skip, right? Um, but definitely, you know, at some point before, regardless, you're going to want to have a reminder and that's going to be uh, your your day one or your day whatever based on, on your, your date based sent. So that's your first campaign. The second campaign is a sales campaign. Now this is something that you'll be able to use over and over again, right? So if you are having, um, you know, if you're gonna be doing regular events, you will have a unique date-based campaign for your individual event that, you know, confirms the details and sends the reminders for any of the events that you have, right? But this campaign that sells your offer after the event, this is something you can use over and over again, unless of course your offer is something that's maybe more time sensitive. So what we'll do here is after we've created this campaign that sells your offer after the event, we're going to uh, attach an automation. We've done other trainings on this before. You should have an automation that adds people to your general mailing list, right? So if somebody doesn't convert in a sales campaign or an initial nurture campaign, we wanna move them over to our general mailing list so that when we email about our latest blog post, YouTube video, whatever, that you know these are the people that are receiving that information. 
So go ahead and attach that general mailing list automation to the last message of your sales campaign. And then we're gonna create a couple of automations. And these are going to either add or remove the sales campaign at different important stages. So the add automation, so add this sales campaign to the contact, we're going to attach that to our event campaign, right? So this campaign that confirms registration, reminds them, et cetera, we are going to send this on the correct date so that after the event is over, right? And we're gonna time this, uh, after the event is over, we will uh, be sent, but we'll be attaching or applying the sales campaign. So this means that after they have been to the event, they start receiving the series of emails that you've already written, right? So this might be, thanks so much for coming. Uh, you know, here's some of what we talked about. Here's the slides or here's the freebie I promised. Uh, but then we wanna really start getting into the pitch, right? Because you probably made a pitch at the event. And uh, we want them to take that action if they haven't already. So that's what we're going to be doing in the messages for this sales campaign. And then of course that automation, we want to apply the sales campaign after they have received the messages necessary from the campaign for the event. And again, I've got a visual model of this if you're losing me, I'll show you in a second. And then there's the, camp the automation that removes the sales campaign. We wanna attach that to the point of sale or whatever point of conversion that you are promoting. So if someone converts to this next step that you're pitching, maybe that's on a sales page, you want them to stop receiving these sales messages and those calls to action because they've already taken the action that you want them to. Our next step would be to create a landing page or an event using the AttractWell Events Manager that offers this event of yours. And then we'll connect that event campaign and any tags that we want to apply to these contacts when they register. And then from there, whether it's a landing page or that event link in AttractWell, we'll get out there and promote our event. So these pieces of this system are replicable. You can repurpose, copy, paste, you know, right? Apply new dates, change the details. Uh, for all of these features. So you don't have to start from scratch every time you have an event, which is pretty cool. And this is, if, if you're planning to sell from your event, this is the, the diagram that I'm working with here. So we've got three pages or in the case of your, um, how you get them registered, it could be an event listing, it could be a landing page. They're going to register here. And after they register, they're going to see a confirmation page. And then these orange circles here, these are our campaign. Okay, so our day zero, that's got our, our registration confirmation. So this is our event campaign. And then based on you know whatever dates you've chosen, it might be day one, it might be day two. This is up to you and how you choose to create this campaign. You may choose to have more messages in it to engage leading up to the campaign. Regardless, you're gonna need to have a message that says, hey, reminder, our event is today or tomorrow or whatever. Um, whatever the today message is, hey, our event is today, we're going to attach our automation to apply our sales campaign to that message. And that sales campaign is not gonna have a day zero message. It will start sending on day one, the next day. So 24 hours later, um, or however you have the, the timing set up uh, for, for the time of day send, we're going to start sending out those sales messages. Now, these you know three messages in the event campaign, four messages in the sales campaign, these are um, not the number of messages that I recommend necessarily, but they're here for, for your reference. I would certainly have a much longer sales campaign than four messages. Uh, and depending on how far ahead of your event you are promoting your event, you may have quite a few messages before these reminder messages that go out. Just make sure that on the one that goes out the day of, we're attaching that automation that applies a sales campaign whose messages start with day one, okay? Now, if we look up here to the sales page, when they're receiving the sales campaign, we are pointing them, linking them in this message, in these messages rather, to that sales page. If they take action on that sales page, we want to remove the sales campaign. That's what this automation two is doing. And then finally on day 12 or 14 or however long you are sending these sales messages, this final automation is one that you're probably using elsewhere in your system. You certainly should be if you aren't already. 
And that is one that applies that contact to a general mailing list if they did not convert from this campaign. So we want them to be, um, you know, our, our general nurture. We are, um, you know, sending them our regular broadcast emails that go out. Now, if you cannot sell, so let's just say, for instance, you have been invited to give a talk and you are not being, um, you're not allowed maybe in this talk to, uh, you know, to, to pitch from the stage, then what I would encourage you to do uh, is, um, or, or actually in this case, you're still getting registration from your site. If for whatever reason, I think the better way to, to frame this for you, if for whatever reason you are not pitching from the stage, but you are kind of using this more as an opportunity to connect. So uh, actually the call that you're on right now would be a great example of this, right? Many people find our content on YouTube, our attract well content on YouTube. And, uh, and, and they're, they're finding us because they maybe, you know, are using Kajabi and spending a crazy amount of money every month, or, um, you know, they're a coach and they're looking for, you know, for a system uh, or any of the different things that we might rank for in keywords. When you find our content and then you find out that you can actually join us live and talk with us and see this stuff in action, a lot of people actually sign up for our, um, our, our office hours calls. So in this case, you know, you're signing up for our office hours calls, which is a recurring event. And, uh, and then you've got this campaign. And then in this case, we're not pitching you hard after you sign up for our office hours call. We're moving you on to our, our general nurture or our, you know, general mailing list, right? So if you're going to do something similar where you're maybe showing up consistently, but you're doing this in, in less of a, I'm going to pitch right now, but maybe more of a, let's get to know each other better way, right? So this is going to differ for you based on uh, maybe the warmth or relevant relevance of connection to the, the audience that you're in front of. Uh, you may not choose to go straight in with a pitch. So in that case, it's going to be somewhat similar where we're going to have our event uh, listing, landing page, or page. We're going to have our confirmation page. We're going to have all of the details about the live event information. And then instead of adding them to a sales campaign, uh, and I forgive me, I didn't edit this where it says sales message. This would be a general or initial nurture campaign. So instead of sales messages down here on the bottom, these are initial nurture messages, which um, we do have other trainings that talk about having an initial nurture campaign, the kinds of things you can put into it. Uh, and of course, in an initial nurture campaign, uh, we aren't not selling stuff. We are typically actually pointing someone to a point of conversion, right? So we're trying to get them to book a call with us or something like that. So if that's you, then it might look a little bit more like this. So let's get into uh, our live help and Q&A and maybe uh, do a quick little walkthrough of some of the features um, that I have referenced here. So um, in your dashboard here, I first want to show you right with AI if you're not familiar with it. Um, this is a really great place to go to start generating ideas. Uh, you can uh, tell it, uh, you know, who you are, what you do, and maybe ask it to come up with, um, you know, maybe get 10 or a dozen different ideas. Say, uh, I am a wellness coach um, working with women in their mid-30s to uh, menopause um on issues like sleep stress work life balance um and uh energy okay uh i am selling a um 90 day uh group program that resets hormones and uh, brings back the energy you remembered from your 20s. I'm selling myself on this, you guys. <laughs> All right. Um, I'd like to promote, or I'd like to um, grow my list and ultimately sell this program with live events. Given what I'm selling, generate 10 to 12 ideas for live events 
where I can deliver value to my audience and then position my program in that talk as the solution to the problems we discuss at the event. Voila. Okay, so I'm going to ask it to write. And it's going to come up with some ideas for me. I'm going to pick my favorite ones. Those will be the ones that I do for the next six months. I'm going to do one per, um, I'm going to do one per month. Here we go. Well, they gave me 11. Perfect. So we've got Revitalize Your Hormones Workshop, Sleep Solution Seminar, Stress Relief Masterclass, Work, but this is fabulous. Okay, so start here, right? This is going to give you so many great ideas. Uh, so you could even hear, I'm going to just grab this one and I'm going to, uh, so now I'm going to tell them, I'm going to leave this up here in the top. So my next event is, here it is. And I'm going to ask it to uh, write copy for a landing page to uh, encourage people to sign up for this event. Voila. You could ask it to come up with a planning list for you. There's so very much you can do here. So, so much, right? So use Write with AI first and foremost to get the ideas together. And then of course, use this as a great organizational framework for you so that you don't have to um, basically, you don't have to dump out all of your creative energies um, where you do still need to use them for other pieces of the puzzle here, right? So give yourself some space by utilizing this resource. Okay, so the order uh, of operations, obviously we're assuming that you've got your sales tool in place. That could be a vault checkout page. It could be a page. Um, wherever it is that you're taking payment, um, have that figured out. The next thing that we're going to do is create a campaign and that's going to be a date-based campaign for the event. So let me come back here and add a campaign. And this is our event campaign, um, sleep solutions seminar. And I'm just gonna name this sleep solutions seminar. I'll create the campaign. I might also, because this is going to be date-based, I, I, I might also in the um, campaign information, go ahead and put the, the date for this as well, because this is going to be date-based. So let me just go back here and um, and pop this in. So this, I'm going to do this on um, August 8th, um, uh, 2024. So I'll save that. Perfect. So I'll have my first message uh, and this is going to be day zero. It's going to send as soon as possible. And this is going to say, uh, you know, confirmation. Uh, so this is where you put the details, the location. Don't put the Zoom link in here um, necessarily, uh, unless you're offering registration up to the point of, uh, you know, the day of, in which case do include the Zoom link so that they have it right away. Um, so put all of the details in here that they need to know. Remember to include something like hit reply, get them to engage with you. Remember everything that we do um, is serving an opportunity for a human to connect with you and figure out whether or not you're a fit for them, right? So the faster we can get them to communicate with us, the better off we are. We do not need to gatekeep in that way. If someone's interested, they need to be able to say so and you need to be able to respond, right? Uh, we are not celebrities here. I don't think we're trying to build that life. <laughs> All right, so we've got our day zero, we've got our confirmation. Uh, we're going to add another message. I'm going to maybe have a few messages in this campaign. Uh, so I'm gonna have maybe an engagement. I'm just gonna call this engagement. I'm gonna talk about uh, content, uh, about the, uh, the talk topic. Um, I'm gonna do that. I'll maybe do that a couple of days. Um, leading up to the event. I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate this one and make that maybe a day uh, day two. Um, and then I'm going to create another one and this is going to be a reminder. Um, our event is tomorrow or you could maybe send this out the Monday of, hey, a reminder, our event is Friday or whatever you wanna do here. Um, 
you may want to choose a specific time of day. These do send by default at 5 p.m. at U.S. Central Time. Uh, so change uh, the specific time of day if you need it to be. Um, let's go ahead and make this date based because now we, we, we need to actually start calculating. So if this is going to send one tomorrow, actually, you know what, let me go ahead and do my day of and then we're good. So um, our event is today. Obviously, again, you're going to be putting stuff into the message body. We're just trying to save some time here. Okay, so if the event is today and it's going to be on the 8th, uh, I'm going to go up here to the dates and then I need to work backwards. So here's the 8th. And that's day four. So one, so this is four, three, two, one, zero. There we go. So this is going to send immediately. Uh, this is going to start sending on the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, et cetera. So if somebody does register, um, somebody does, does register on the sixth, they're not going to see whatever was sent on the fifth, just FYI. Um, but if you are offering registration quite a bit ahead of a uh, of an event, it is a good idea to keep them engaged in the meantime. Now, remember the campaigns we discussed uh, that we are going to use the automations for. So this this is our event campaign. We need to attach our sales campaign here. Now, let's go real quick to our automations and make sure that we've got one that attaches our sales campaign. Let me see if I've got to add to sales campaign. I've got to remove from sales campaign. I'm going to create an add sales campaign. And you would want to do a sales campaign for a particular offer that you have. Of course, if you have multiples, make sure that you are designating those. All right, we're going to add or restart the sales campaign. Here's my awesome program sales campaign. I'm gonna add that automation and then we're gonna go back to that campaign that we created. Since I already have the opt out um, automation made. All right, so um, let me find that here. We're gonna attach this here uh, to, uh, here, let me go to my edit messages times and automation automations right here. The automation here is going to be add to, what is it, sales? Yeah, add sales campaign. Okay, so this is how we have this set up, right? Now, obviously your sales campaign, we have other trainings on how to create one, but this is what you need to know to be able to create this, uh, this event. Now, um, our next steps here, so we've created our um, campaign that confirms registration, reminds them. Uh, we've got a campaign that sells our offer. We've got an automation that attaches that, that sales campaign on the last day of the, um, the event campaign. And we do have an automation that removes the sales campaign that we will attach at the point of sale. So uh, when you set up payment, for instance, on your offer, uh, you would be attaching an automation there that removes this campaign. All right, the next step that we need to follow here uh, is uh, creating our landing page and getting it all together. Now you can choose a couple of different options. You can choose an actual landing page and attract 12 for this. You could create a page. You could also create an event. Now we do have an events manager in attract 12. So we can create that here. Let's actually go into what we did with Write with AI and maybe pop in uh, from our prior responses what we are going to be using. So here's our sleep solution seminar. I'm just gonna copy all of this information. Oh, this is, it even has testimonials in it. Did you guys see that? This is so cool. All right, so I'm gonna go use paste plain text, which is right here. Paste that into the document and I've got a lot to work with here. And obviously there's a lot that I'm going to, to move around. There's my event name. Um, obviously we'll want to modify what's here. Um, so I'm gonna go here to uh, give the event details. Here we go, that's going to be on the 8th. It's gonna be at 7 p.m. I'm gonna send them to a confirmation page uh, for the event. If you don't have one, they're very easy to create. Oh, wait, there's my event confirmation. There we go, my live event confirmation. This would, uh, the confirmation page should reiterate the details of this. 
All right, and then I am going to uh, allow self-registration. That means they can actually register right here on the event page. If you would prefer to send them to a page, you certainly could. Uh, and, and you could put that link right here. That way this would actually display on your website under the events uh, section. So it would be yourwebsite.com slash events. And it would show all of your upcoming events that people can RSVP for. Uh, in this case, uh, we would want to, if you wanna actually just have them register direct from this event, uh, we would wanna create one more automation that would apply that event campaign. And we would attach that right here. And then once you've got this created, you'll be able to see who is RSVP'd, uh, once it's been created, uh, they'll get all of those messages automatically. They'll receive all of the follow-up afterward, and you can repeat this over and over again. So my recommendation would be to just do this in that order I was discussing, right? So starting with right with AI, go in and work out, you know, six different things. Do do three or six of these at a time, right? Where you create the um, you create the the event listings, you create the campaigns. Uh, you don't have to recreate the sales campaign because you're hopefully selling the same thing, right? And being able to reuse that sales campaign. Uh, and you're using those same automations to attach the sales campaign or remove them from the point of sale. And then you're simply just going to be creating a new version of the event campaign, a new automation that applies uh, the sales, uh, sorry, that, that, uh, that applies the campaign to them if you're going to be using your events here. And then of course, as people are registering, you can manage all of this right here. And that really creates like a, it's a set it and forget it situation for you where you don't have to worry about like, oh, do, did I get this email out in time? It's just all there and it's all ready to go. Um, there are other ways to do this. Uh, happy to discuss those with you guys. Uh, let me just come over here real quick and see if we have anything here in the Q and A. Um, that we can address where this is concerned. And Adrian, I see you're here because of that day of campaign. Um, so if you have questions about that, do let me know. Uh, day of is, uh, I think typically what we're talking about is day zero, and that just means that it's going to be sent ASAP. Okay, Peggy says, uh, what if, burn my face, <laughs> what, if, what if I want people to get the first email of the sales campaign on the same day of the event? So if the event is at 7 p.m., I want them to have the sales campaign in their inbox when the event is over at 8 p.m. Yeah. So what I would do in that case, and granted, I, I feel like I should, let, let me make a, a note here for you. Um, you do have the ability, you don't necessarily have to like have these campaigns be separate. Um, I find it to be cleaner and a lot easier to use and more importantly, reuse, repurpose. Um, if you do have, you know, just for each event, you have a campaign and you're using that same sales campaign. So if you are using that system, which is what I recommend, uh, what I would do is whatever the, like, you just basically need to make sure that whenever it is that you want them to receive that message, it's obviously gonna be day one, so you need it to be attached to the message that goes out the day before, right? So maybe in this case, in that campaign, there was a, hey, remember our event is tomorrow, right? So hey, here's a reminder, our event's tomorrow. Attach the automation to that message, and that way they're receiving in the, in the event campaign, they're receiving the, you know, hey, our, you know, our event's live in 20 minutes or whatever, um, and they will have already been sort of in the queue to receive maybe later that evening, because you put in a special time of day, um, they'll start receiving the messages from the sales campaign. Okay, that makes sense. I am so glad. <laughs> All right, if you're recommending doing this for six months, is the same topic each time, or are you saying choose one of the uh, one of the eleven AI created? This is really going to depend, Sandy, on your your business and your offer. I think that. Yeah, it depends. It depends. If if you've got an audience that uh, would want to show up for a version of the same thing uh, once a month and it doesn't really change. Uh, and, and again, th there are good reasons to do this, right? So let's just say, for instance, you are someone who offers um, CEs uh, to our continuing education credits uh, to practitioners. 
And you do that by selling them this course, right? That's the thing you sell. You have a course. The course provides uh, continuing education education credits for practitioners. And you're running an info session once a month. That's what this could look like. And so that info session, yeah, would be basically the same thing every month. And I think that if the topic, uh, you know, if it's targeted well like that, Right. So people, you know, if you're a massage therapist and, you know, these are CEs about, you know, essential oils or something, anybody who knows that they want to like have those continuing education credits on that topic, um, they're, you know, they're automatically going to know that like what they're signing up for is essentially an info session where they are going to get some value, but then they're going to find out whether or not they want to be sold on this course. So that would be an instance where something like that might work. Um, generally speaking, I would, I would change things up because you're nurturing a list. And if you're just offering the same thing every single week or every single month rather uh, to that list, um, we aren't necessarily providing the most compelling opportunities for people to convert. So I, I would encourage you to at least create some variation. Uh, for events, do I need to integrate a third party calendar such as Calendly? No, you don't. Uh, no. Not at all. <laughs> no, for what we're talking about here today, you can use the events manager and attract well, or uh, you could just simply use pages. And we do have a lot more trainings that go into events. We've done a lot of them. You can find them in the Success Academy under uh, live training and replays. Um, uh, but no, uh, you would want to have a, like a maybe a third party calendar uh, scheduler for, you know, maybe getting people onto strategy calls with you. Uh, if you are using that as a call to action in your funnel. Um, but uh, but for what I've outlined today, you don't need a third party anything. You can do this all with a track well. Let's see, is there a sandbox to test the event workflows before we publish them? So uh, no, not, not in the true sense of a sandbox. However, um, you get to choose when you create an event, uh, whether or not it's visible on your website. So there is this option uh, in the event setup here um, where this is something that's available by link only. You can do the same thing with pages on your site, right? So uh, if we go to event options, direct link only. Right. So if you're if you're testing and you're not ready to have this be something public on your website, just select this option and then you can you can play around with it that way. And you do have the option in your pages as well in the settings uh, to have those be available by link only as well. All right, Seva, I have you down uh, for a live work review. So let me go ahead and bring you out. And I do see your hand up, Colette. I'm going to bring you out here in just a bit. Hey, Seva, how can we help? Hi, thank you. Um, my issue is with the, I, I get confused between automation and campaign. Okay. <laughs> so automation is something that automatically happens when people click on things or do things. Mm -hmm. um, and then campaigns are something that funnels it or that goes into their email um, to follow up on something maybe that maybe clicked on or maybe something like that. So what I have is I have a free intro class. I have a campaign and automation set up to that. I was just wondering if you could look at that and make sure. Yeah, because people actually going on my website and I get these notifications that somebody registered on my homepage, which makes me think that they grabbed the free intro class. Okay. Is that what yeah, that so, means? Yeah, that would be whatever is, so your home page, when someone registered, that means that they filled out the name and email section um, and whatever page that was on, in this case, your home page. So whatever the lead magnet is that you have on your home page, they would have uh, registered for that. So yeah, the, the, they yeah. would have gone right okay. here. Yeah. Okay. And so then what I'm, what I'm wanting your help with is to see how is that getting followed up on? And, and, and if I set something up, to follow up on it, or if I need to do more. Got you. Yeah. So that's going to be in the settings in your lead settings on this page. So after a lead registers, um, the follow-up that's happening is that they're going, they're, they're going to start receiving this free class, this 
free class campaign. So you are following up with them and they're receiving the series of messages that you have put in place here. Or so here's your, your first one. Yeah, it's just one. It's like here, here it is. But I had it linked to a YouTube link, but I've actually mm -hmm. made it a vault for it now. And I don't know if you mm -hmm. would recommend one over the other or um, mm -hmm. if it matters, but when it comes to like, you know, doing the automations and campaigns, I wondered if a vault would be more. Um, yeah. So it kind of depends, right? So, so we're, we've got a tag here. We've got a vault here. So the, the campaign, so I, with what you've got here, so we are offering a free intro class. It's a one hour class. Do you have plans just to, to speak to the vault question? Do you have plans to like sell from the vault? So let's just say for instance, like here's a free class. Um, do you intend to have like paid classes in there that you want people to be able to see are available? Um, so the, there's two certification courses that this intro class goes over and they're separate, but they're paid. Okay. Okay. And they and, and those, have their own vault. And they would have their own vault. Yeah. So there's certainly no harm in this. Uh, what I would do though, instead of utilizing, so I'll rewind just a little bit. So a campaign is an automated series of messages that can be email and or text. Um, they can be used in an evergreen sense, meaning, you know, someone could sign up for this at 2 p.m. today or 4 a.m. a year from now on March the 7th, and they, you know, and, and they'll get the same messages, right? Um, all of the same things will happen in terms of the communication that's sent out. So a campaign is communication. An automation can be attached to anything related to the contact. It could be they completed a lesson in, in one of your online classes. It could be they clicked a link mm -hmm. in an email or a text. Uh, it could mean yeah. that a campaign finished sending. So now we're gonna send a new one or we're gonna remove another one or we're gonna reroute them to a whatever. So uh, change their tag, et cetera. Remind you to do something uh, with a follow-up plan. So automations do boatloads of stuff uh, and are useful at a couple of, well, they're, they're useful everywhere. Um, they have heightened use in places, for instance, where you wanna maybe manipulate what communication looks like at a particular juncture based on a contact's activities. Um, this is really where mm -hmm. um, automations are what make conditional response possible with AttractWell uh, mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. Uh, so if your goal is if somebody you know says, I would like to take this free intro class, uh, then what I would do is on this page, and let's just go back to uh, this this page, uh, your home page, and anywhere else you're making this offer. I would add them to the vault here. Don't you don't need the automation oh. for that. Um, add them to the vault okay. here. Add the tag that you want here. Um, maybe on this thank you page, let them know that they're receiving an additional email from you that's going to give instructions on how to log in and get access. Right. Um, but you to the vault. Right? Yeah, to yeah, so yeah. the vault of the yeah yeah. So the the vault uh, is going to unless you've changed this, the vault has a welcome to vault campaign that's going to go out automatically that you don't really need to do anything with. It's just going to give them instructions, um, and so all of that's handled just fine here. Now the reason why you might choose to say have an automation related to all of this here's just like one example. Um, if you have a, another offer on your site or you have a general mailing list or something like this, um, pro usually it's going to be, maybe you're, you're offering something else. Maybe you've got a freebie for a download and in that download, you're like, Hey, you should check, you should check out this workshop. Hey, you should check out this workshop. Right. You would use an automation in that case, maybe at the vault for, for this, the vault where you're hosting, uh, your, uh, this, right. Um, Mm -hmm. When they enter this vault, we might remove that campaign that's saying, hey, check out this intro class, check out this intro class, because they now that they have the class, we don't want to tell them that anymore. But the way that you have this set up, you, I, I don't really see a need uh, for an automation. Um, it's just if you start, you know, creating more complications, then automations might become more helpful to you. Okay, and then if I did want to, and I do like want to have a campaign with those who register for this class. Um, so I would just go to the campaigns 
over in um the member uh let's see where is that campaigns under contacts and mm -hmm. then set up a i don't know where whatever i call it like a free class campaign or something and then just start doing email content into those yeah so like what what i would do what i would do in in this case is um this is your lead magnet um, this free mm -hmm. class that you're offering, uh, and mm -hmm. that somebody said yes to a free thing doesn't necessarily mean that they are going to do anything with it. Uh, and so you've got a massive opportunity, I would say maybe over the course of 10 days to two weeks to drip out an email every day or every other day in this campaign, this free class campaign, uh, introduce yourself, talk about what they're going to get out of the training, uh, share some of the testimonials about the different courses that you offer. And then you're ultimately like by the end of this campaign, you're really kind of transitioning into um, encouraging them to purchase one of those two yeah. uh, courses that you have. So this is, I would build out this free class campaign that you have because oh this is what needs to be communicated with the people who are saying yes to the intro class. Perfect. Thank you. That's very good direction. And then and for those who have already registered for it, is there any way to add them to the campaign? So if they've already registered or for it, um, then what I would do, hmm, so do, 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 let's see, it just depends on how many there are. I would go ahead and build this out for your evergreen purposes, right? So just go ahead and have this built the way that you want to have it built. Um, and, and then I would maybe go in and let's see. Well, actually, you know what? No, never mind. Okay, yeah, because if it was date based and you were doing it that way, then it would come out the other way. All right, disregard what I just said. I'm thinking out loud. Okay, so what I would do is I would I would develop all of these you know emails that you want to send and um, and then maybe go back to the folks who did opt in. So you'll be filtering your contacts. I don't wanna go show your contacts to everybody, uh, but you would filter your contacts for the folks who've opted in. Um, and then maybe offer to, uh, to maybe resend, uh, or you could create another version of this campaign that uh, removes the stay zero message because they've already received it. It just depends on how long it's been is the oh. thing, right? Like oh, if yeah, okay, you know, no, that's yeah, doable, yeah. Yeah, you just, you don't want to go from, you know, somebody opted in to get something from you and got one email from you two months ago, and then all of a sudden you're emailing them every day. That's, it's not the best transition. So yeah. what, what I would encourage yeah. is just maybe provide some, uh, some reason for people to say, you know, yeah, I, I want to hear more about this stuff. Uh, and then maybe use an automation link for them to click. And then they start getting the, the same message that anybody else would get. So they're basically getting the campaign again, just a version of it that doesn't have this day zero. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Very helpful. Yeah. So much. Yeah, sure thing. Okay. Let me see. I have uh, Colette. Hi. Okay. Hi. Yeah. So you helped me make a campaign last week or the week before, like you're talking about with the automations. The problem mm -hmm. is my lo my logo doesn't fit well. So when they get the, you know, they, they click on the link, or when I send them the link, it's the the, the logo is cut off. You know, I guess I didn't use the right, I didn't create the best size logo. And so when I try to go into the, what is it, the shared, uh, I wrote, I forget the, the verbiage, but you can't go into the, a landing page and change the shared graphic. And, and I'm just wondering if, if the Get Orling system, if Greg or somebody would be willing to add that. Okay. Is there a particular page where I can see what's happening? Um, is It's a landing page? All my landing pages do it. Just pick any landing page. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And and this is something that's maybe happening on mobile or or just generally. Let me see. It doesn't really in any way that I send it. Yeah, if I send it in a message like a text or oh right, oh, if I send it to you, I I know what you're talking about. So this isn't a page formatting thing. This is the preview that's showing up when you're texting someone, for instance. Right, like I'm like, they asked for some information. I'm like, here's my, you know, flyer, PDF, whatever. Or it's a landing 
takes to collect their information before they get the flyer. Mm -hmm. It's really unprofessional to see my logo cut off. They say they say Olet and Oni, you know, instead of Colette right. and Tony. Got you. Yeah, because it's 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 loading your logo. Let me see. I don't know if we yeah. have a featured image. So our um our landing page builder is super simplified. Uh let me mm -hmm. edit the settings. I know I'm not sharing right now. I just want to kind of wanted to see if there's um okay. Yeah, no, this this is um I think Julie mentioned putting that on the wish list. So um, which which I think <laughs> is is a good idea. So what you're talking about is is something that's called a um like a sharing image. Um Correct. If you if yeah. you plan to share your link via text uh, as as mm -hmm. a primary means, not via email, then I would recommend just using pages in Get Oiling to create this like the same setup. Basically, um, you know, you're you're basically creating a um, you know you've got a section image on one side, form on the other, and then so, in the yeah, page so settings, you can make those modifications. And um, and the reason why it's not showing up correctly is that these are two different resolutions, right? Your ideal logo resolution uh, is, mm -hmm. you know, it's twice as, as long as it is tall, um, but a social sharing image, which would work on Facebook or text, is, um, is definitely not the same, right? Uh, so it would right. be 1200 by 600 versus like something that's a little, you know, more, more of a squared uh, rectangle. So, mm -hmm. uh, so it's not going to work uh, in that instance. So what I would do is, um, yes, yeah, is, is use pages for that for now uh, to dial that in. And then um, we've got that on the wish list for uh, being able okay. to create And, and that, that's what I did. Sharing. I created a page. Mm -hmm. I created a page instead of a landing page, but then I don't collect their information. Well, why, why not? Well, because the page, I mean, the landing page says, you know, I want you, you know, please give me your email and your name. And then oh, you can do that on a page tagged. too. Yeah, you can, you can do that on a page as well. Here. Oh. It's, yeah, it's super simple. So um, I'm just going to create a blank page. Mm -hmm. And then we'll do a, just like we have in landing pages, photo on the left, text on the right. You're going to say whatever you want to mm -hmm. say here. And then instead of mm -hmm. the button here, I'm going to unlink this and I'm going to put in form in brackets and then under settings leads we're going to show the capture form on the page i'm gonna let's see i'm gonna just modify this just a bit obviously here you're going to want to change things up however you want to change them send them just just like you set up your landing page tags campaigns redirects etc but mm -hmm. here now you're able to, you know, more or less make this the same. And, and then the way that you're going to modify how this shows up when you send this via text or you put the link in Facebook or what have you, uh, is if you go to the page settings, it's this sharing image here. Right. I, I knew it was a sharing image. I just knew you couldn't do it on the landing page. Can you just yeah. save that for me? <laughs> sure. You know, sure, sure. Call it whatever, ask the training or something, and then I'll... Once I'm just I have, calling it, I can just I'm calling it landing page yeah. and let me actually go in and make Perfect. this. Yeah, it's a by link only. It's called landing page. So you can go in and play around with that. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, sure thing. Sure thing. <laughs> All right. Station says, I can't wait to use this for my retreats. Oh, yes, absolutely. You can use this for retreats. Um, All right. Thank you, Julie, for getting all these great questions. Uh, so should the lead magnet be set up in the campaigns, not on the landing page? I think I confused both. Yeah, so um, the way, the best way to explain this is um, the lead magnet is the thing you're giving away, okay? So that thing you're giving away, it could live on a page in the form of a video. It could be a PDF that you are attaching to an email. Uh, it could be, you could be sending them a link to something, whatever, or in this case, like we talked about today, the lead magnet is the event, right? It's the experience they're going to have. So they're signing up and registering to attend this event. Now, in order for someone to access a lead magnet of any kind, they need to register. That's what a landing page is. So a landing page is the front door to a funnel. 
It is where um, you are announcing what they get when they put their name and email in. So this thing that Colette and I were just discussing uh, on her, uh, her future page here, this will be a landing page where we put a picture of the thing that we are offering and tell them what they're gonna get. Now all you gotta do is put in your name and email, right? This is the landing page. And the thing that it talks about is the lead magnet. Now, how do they get the lead magnet? That's going to depend on what your lead magnet is and what its format is. But generally speaking, for most of us, it's going to be a download, which you're going to put in the campaign. That's the communication. Those are those messages that go out. And that's what we're going to do right down here. Um, after a lead registers, we're going to attach our campaign. We're going to tag that lead so that we know uh, what they opted in for, right? And then we're going to send them to a confirmation page that tells them how to get access to the thing, the lead magnet that they just signed up for, right? So maybe in this case, like we discussed today, it's reiterating the dates, details of uh, the upcoming event, or maybe it's saying, hey, I've just sent what you asked for, go check your email, right? And feel free to send any follow-up questions if you have them. I hope that that helps. Uh, let me see. Awesome, thanks for sticking around. Um, Stacia, I just have to focus on getting a track wall set up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, integrated, yeah, yeah. So if you, um, I think, all right, you mentioned your, websites, your website is on WordPress, will need to be attached to a track well. Um, so the, that's gonna depend, uh, you know, kind of on what your goals are. If you have an existing site that's set up for other purposes that you must keep or you would prefer to keep for some uses, um, one of the, the ways that folks will use us in instances like that is to maybe have a subdomain either attached to the WordPress site or to attract well either or, uh, just kind of depending on the different use cases. Uh, but but it, I think it is important to note for anybody who doesn't know this, you do not need to have WordPress if you have a track well. All of the pages, all of the functions, everything that you could do with websites on any other platform, you can do with us. You can have it all in one place, uh, but you can also, if you do have other sites uh, that you want to link to and from, you can do that with your menus on those respective sites. And of course you could use, um, you could always use a subdomain. <laughs> okay, look, we're here for you. Uh, let me show you real quick um, if you're, you're newer here. Um, let's come back over here to the Success Academy. I'm still in Save His Account, forgive me. Um, in the Success Academy here, get help from a real person. If you ever need to slow this down, work with someone live on this. Of course, we have our Thursdays. You can sign up for our calls here. And if you'd like to work together like Save and I did today, you can go right here uh, to, uh, to actually sign up for dedicated space on a Thursday. Pam also has fantastic small group calls that you could get onto, and she has other hours outside of the ones that I'm available here. Uh, and she is uh, incredibly gifted uh, with design, with strategy, with copywriting, and more. So uh, you'll get a lot of help on a call like that too. Uh, so definitely check that out. And if all else fails, you can just send us a little message right here. So um, you're good. You're good. You've got support here. Uh, we're here to help. Uh, thank you guys for sticking around today and uh, sharing all of these great questions. If you would like uh, to have a question addressed that you have not seen addressed yet, if you have a, an idea of how you would like to use a track well and you're not clear on how to do it, let us know. We may wind up creating a training like one of these just for you. We will be back here same time next week. I hope you guys have a fantastic week. Till then, have a good one, everybody. Take care. <laughs>